Building a strong team is the first step to success, as we've just heard. But effective partnerships also play a crucial mix. Um, this brings us to our next panel, affiliates and operators. How to create a trusted and transparent partnership for mutual success. Our panel of experts will explore the dynamics of successful relationships between affiliates and operators. Moderating this panel is Levon Nikogosian, founder and CEO uh, at Afpapa. Levon, I'm going to welcome you and your panelists up on stage. Give them a warm round of applause. Hello. Now? Now we do. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to our panel discussion. As already presented, I am Levan, CEO of Afpapa, and I'm humbled and honored to be moderating today's uh, panel discussion about affiliates and operators. And uh, I'm very thankful to all of you for accepting uh, to be part of this panel discussion. Let me introduce you the superstars of iGaming affiliate world, and maybe I take a seat. <laughs> so, uh, I'll start from right to the left. Pavel Alexeyev, head of sales at SEO Brothers. Uh, Aksana Sheri, CMO WorldBet. Paul Polaka, CMO of Mr. Gambo. Tristan Smook, head of affiliates Betson. Giannis Katsavrias, Senior Affiliate Manager at Campion Gaming, and Branislav Ristik, ex-head of commercials at Ktena Media. So as you can see, we have quite a panel today, and we are going to tackle the questions about uh, par partnership and uh, trustworthy and mutual beneficial uh, deals between affiliates and operators. So guys, you will have two minutes uh, for a question since um, we are six, you are six in the you know, panel to answer and the questions will be divided between affiliate side questions and operator side questions and some of them are just generic. So let's start with the first one and uh, as we all know these days many casino brands and affiliates are appearing in the market and it becomes extremely hard to distinguish genuinely decent and trustworthy ones who you should spend time on you know to create and seal the partnership how do you maintain relationships and shape whether the opposite side is worth your time and effort to seal the partnership maybe we can start with Pavel and uh, go to the left Thank okay you. yeah sure hello everybody so, um, sorry, cheer us up a bit because we are <laughs> a bit tense. Thank you. Go Thank ahead, you. Nate. Yeah, first of all, I must say that uh, when we see a lot of new brands, for us basically it feels good because it means that the market is kicking his legs, it's growing, it's not uh, dying in any way. So, yeah. And if, uh, as a sales represent representative from Casino Canada and other big sources, I can say that we must give a chance to any new proposal and uh, we have our own experience, our vision of cooperation, our, our experience of the market. Uh, we have checklists for any new proposal, for any new brand. So we are moving step by step uh, and yeah, we try to meet in person, but like to extend this uh, cooperation um, further, further than only chat, Skype, Skype chat, I mean. So, and this is the reason even why we are all here, to see each other, to cooperate, to establish a uh, live connection this way. Thank you very much, Pavel, for your insights. Moving forward with Aksana, so what do you think? How do you measure or what indicators do you use to find out whether the partner is worth enough to have a you know conversation with or a deal with 
Hello, everyone. Uh, first of all, as you know, this business is uh, based a lot on relationships. We all have network, we all have network of uh, ex-colleagues, friends, and I think it's important, it's not the only indicator if uh, I need to question about a new potential partner, but I found it in the past very helpful. You ask your network, uh, people you trust, people you have worked before, uh, if they had experience, uh, quite often it happens helpful. If they had any um, negative feedback and they tell you avoid this brand, um, yeah, that's basically it. Thank you very much, Oksana. Moving forward with Mr. Gamble. Yeah. Hi, all. Nice to be here. Uh, very good points. I think I'm going to be in, like, um, we have also, like, we're using network and personal connections for that one to define if the brand is good. So this why these kind of conferences are really good to get to know people behind the brands. And in this industry, trust is a must. Uh, so obviously, we also check the brand. What kind of license does it have? Uh, also, like we benchmark different affiliates. So if we know that Docker, okay, there's a big affiliate like Tene Media or um, Regtech or what, what, whatever, if they have it listed there, it's probably a good brand because I know that they have, they're really tight in like what, what they list on, also on the site. Uh, so I would say personal, of course, experience. We use our network to ask a bit like, hey, have you worked with this brand? And obviously, we check also like other affiliate sites, uh, licenses, uh, how does the product look? <coughs> so, yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Thank you very much. And Tristan, how do you deal with the new affiliates? I don't think that's on. So, um, from, from our side, it's always, it's always important that we give everyone a chance. Um, we're not, we're not, we don't. Um, uh, we don't look at it as a blanket and say no, 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 and be selective. I think everyone needs a fair chance when you, when you want to give them a, an option to become a new partner. But it's important when you have a new partner that they share as much information with you as you want, are willing to share with them, right? So we're very transparent and open about what we have or what we can do, our licenses, our regulations, our compliances, and all that. So we expect when a new partner comes that you know, they're, they're willing to share as well and, and, and give as much info as, as possible to make the decision quite informed and quite easy. Um, of course, we use a lot of systems as well, so we can do checks, we can look at your site, we can tell if you've got traffic or not, so we can call your bluff quite easily, which we do pretty well at, but we're very open to, to new sources because if you treat, this, if, it, it's like customer service, right? And it's the same with partnerships. You, you treat everyone like a VIP from the beginning because that, VIP, that person could blossom into probably your best affiliate you know, in a couple of years, especially if it's an SEO site, building up the rankings and everything. You know, you've got to give them the chance because, as you know, it's the SEO rankings drop and you lose exactly. traffic. So you've got to sort of follow where the best traffic is. So for us, it's an open book. It's, it's important to give everyone a chance, but we will screen properly, be open. And, and, and a key for me is always... Besides just a Skype, which can get really full and messy with Skype chats and stuff, schedule a call. Get a call done. That's really important. It's pretty old school, but speak to the person face to face and, 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 and either meet them or, or make a call. A call is the best way to solidify a relationship. You can really get the nitty gritty and uh, you can make a good deal. Maybe you could share some of those tools that you are using. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, fair enough. Thank you very much. Moving ahead with Giannis. How do you deal, mate? Very good. Thank you very much for having us here. So, as Tristan said, um, from our side, I mean, we are very open. Uh, we need to onboard as many people as we can because, at the end of the day, each one of them has one opportunity to bring us in the end something good. But for me, it's as many things as they ask, we need to get deeper into to searching them. I mean, if they just come and ask for some revenue, sir, okay, it's easy for us to onboard them and start the cooperation in the end of the day. They can start asking for more, perhaps, for CPA flat fee. But if they come and directly they request a flat fee or a, a big uh, you know, listing fee, we will need to check them more. 
as Tristan said, yeah, we also have some tools. We will need to ask for some recommendations. I personally, uh, because the last few years we were around the event, I will check if this guy was also there, let's say, or if somebody, some friend knows them. But in the end of the day, we will have to check before closing a deal like that, uh, every detail, every statistic, statistic that they can provide. Even if we jeopardize that, these statistics perhaps are not uh, legit. And uh, as, as more as they ask, we will try to have some test caps, some, uh, some more limited you know, uh, exposure in order to control perhaps a, a potential fraud. Most of, mostly that, yeah. Yeah, makes absolute sense. And thanks yeah, for the insight, of course. And moving with Branislav, which is uh, very interesting here because as Paul mentioned, sometimes they are looking at the big brands, mm -hmm. whether these uh, casinos appear on Rake Tech or Ktena Media or Better Collective website. So as being behind one of those giants, how do you deal, guys? Well, first of all, it's, it's great to, to, to hear such a thing. Um, you know, when it comes to making sure who you're dealing with um, before you seal the deal or partnership, uh, I would say for everybody who has been long enough in the industry, it's quite, I would say, easy to find out more about the person on the other side. Um, there is a lot of groups, you know, and, and we all talk between ourselves, and um, it's quite, you know, like, it's straightforward to know, you know, if you, who you're dealing with, if, uh, if, if those guys are doing the, you know, legit business or whatever. So. Uh, but of course, this doesn't mean that you know if it works for for you, it will gonna it's gonna work for me too. But at least you you know for a fact that you're not gonna end up you know with the unsettled invoices that you're gonna have to chase. Um, for the for the second part of the partnership, I mean, my, my colleagues pretty much covered uh, a big part of it. So I would maybe like to tackle this from the other angle. Um, the you know I, I like to call it like a play the long game. Um, and uh, the, the, the phrase, now it's not the time, uh, having in mind like, um, uh, a, a lot of uh, layoffs lately, frozen budgets. Uh, I mean, after all, the, the world in an economic crisis, now it might not be the time for some companies to actually um, do the business. So um, I would say that the patience plays um, you know, a crucial role here. So, you know, like, uh, feel and nurture your pipeline now so you can, you know, like, um, uh, benefit f uh, from them in the in the in the future. You know, do not b burn your your contact. Every contact matter. Uh, every every contact matters. You know, do not burn them with the templated cadences and, uh, you know, try to um, to 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 uh, educate, personalize, and, and like your your outreach. Um, uh, to I, how I like to call it, like try to uh, break down their their guard, uh, wall of fear, whatever you want to call it. Um, get yourself an ammo and and be ready once they're ready to buy. Uh, because you know, once the, the things cool down, you know, you better be looking at the at the, at the uh, healthy pipeline uh, to convert. Nice. Thank you very much for the insight. And the next question goes to affiliates. So maybe again we can uh, continue with Pavel. And uh, I mean, you guys are, you know, you see the brands from the other angle. You see the brands from your perspective not only as a casino but also as a partner which should be reliable enough uh, to be present at your website. How do you deal with complaints against your top brands? Is it stiff to delist or accept bad reviews on the casinos that make colossal amount of your revenues? And what is your strategy in general in that case? Like, What do you do the first or there are like maybe any uh, structure-wise plans or any kind of tools that you use not to delist or, or blacklist them immediately or you try to encourage them you know, to be more responsible and etc. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. Well, um, uh, if we have a deal, first of all, we never break our word, we never delist a brand if we have a deal, if we get prepaid. Uh, if this exposure spot is sold, we, we, didn't, we will not touch it in any way. This is our responsibility, this is our re reputation. Uh, secondly, um, this is like a common situation. We, we firstly need, need to understand from whom this compliant came. We need to analyze it. And um, we are not taking it personally just with one angle. 
with one point of view. Uh, this compliant can contain hidden signal for us that we just need to be a little, we, we need to have little alert on this brand, but uh, we can even go to this brand and see their point of view, ask about this situation, because it's, I don't know, might be stupid to ground on only one point of view. And uh, also we can ask other colleagues, competitors about this case, and then we generate our own opinion, our own position, and uh, yeah, like this. So we need to evaluate this case, that's all. Yeah. But does that case bother you or it doesn't really matter for you? Let's say if it's like, you know, reviews go down to one or two stars, like out of 10, you no, just no, leave, no. It, leave it as it is or you try to, you know, take some actions, you know, and step in and, you know, talk f for your players? Mm, for one person, this case might be like, yeah, it happened, but for us, it could be in another way. Um, people are different, somebody has the contact, somebody not. One case is good, one case is bad, so it doesn't mean that it, this will happen with us too. So <laughs> we, we, are, we want to trust, we want to try. We, all, we always give a chance, we never show our back and go away. <laughs> Cool, makes sense. Paul, how do you deal with such cases? What are your first actions? And well, I mean, I'm sorry, just, just to clear, clear it up, it's not just about a single complaint or something. It's when you see a flood of complaints coming with unpaid bonuses, unpaid withdrawals, and etc. Well, obviously, if there's all of a sudden there's like 20 bad re like reviews there, like we really dig into those, like, like what could be the issue behind that one? Obviously, we contact also the partner that, hey, have you noticed that your brand has got quite bad, like, uh, reviews there? Um, it's, it's always, like, there's may, many angles to that one. So normally it can be that just, like, you know, some player has lost and he or didn't, like, comply with the, like, bonus rules or something like that. So usually, like, the complaints are a bit, like, yeah, one-sided, obviously. You get frustrated, then you didn't or withdrawal will get, takes too long or something like that. Uh, but we want to be transparent uh, to our customers, the B2C, but also B2B. So we need, really need to check like, the angles of what's happened and try to dig into that one. And obviously, we check also if there's similar complaints uh, in other affiliate sites or forums. So. But at the end of the day, we just want to like, tackle the problem also with the operator. So want to be like, hey, have you noticed this one? What could this problem be here? Or something like that. Cool. And the leader of complaints, <laughs> solutions, <laughs> what, how do you deal, guys? What do you do? I mean, uh, especially when uh, you really get a colossal amount of revenue from a brand that just, you know, behaves unfair with their players, that, that from your feeling as well. Um, <clears throat> before I answer to your question, I, I, I think it's going to be easier if we kind of split the affiliates in, 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 um, um, in three groups, basically, because not all the affiliates are the same or have the uh, same uh, business philosophy. First of all, there's a group of the affiliates, and I believe my colleague will, will agree that you know, they're mainly um, focused on, 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 on uh, you know, having the, the network sites you know, and the, the comparison sites, top list sites, call them whatever you want. And the players who can, their audience, the, who actually land on their websites, they're not looking for any additional value apart from, you know, maybe at the moment the best offers. So they, uh, at the end of the day, uh, um, they don't really care that much about, okay, you know, like what if the brand doesn't perform good or if it's not good from the, from the player's eyes. Uh, of course, as, as long as they do the legitimate business, of course. Um, and then you have, you know, the, the giants, and I, I can say AG is one of them as Gambus. Um, and, and during my time with the Asgambas, um, over s seven, eight years, I believe, um, uh, sometimes we shoot ourselves in the foot and, and we worked against ourselves revenue-wise. 
um, um, on, the, on the short run because you know, like we knew that we're going to benefit from it on the long run. Why? why? Because the, the, the players who kind of used to come or come to, to AG, they're not looking just you know the best office bon bonus. They're here for this additional extra value. You know that we actually really support them with the unbiased reviews uh, and to help them about the complaints, whatever. Um, so in, in, in this case, they keep coming back. Otherwise, if you would just you know say, okay, doesn't matter, you're here for the complaints, but we're not, not, not going to for the reviews. We're not going to be transparent. We're not going to help you out. Then we're going to um, I mean we're going to lose the, the, the clients, and it's going to hurt. And uh, the, the third group of the affiliates, obviously, it's kind of a mix of both. And um, you know when it comes to them, everything boils down to making the right balance. I, I'd say. Yeah, thank you very much, of course, and uh, especially when AG itself is a unique affiliate website in terms of returning players and customers that are not specifically SEO driven, but they are returning just to check every single you know, operator for their, and even affiliates sometimes look up at you to see if everything is yeah. going right with a specific operator. And moving to operators uh, and speaking about the new deals with affiliates, especially with the CPA deals that you are getting request, tons of requests uh, for. Uh, some affiliates also request a listing fee, but um, I'm not genuinely speaking about them. Uh, when you get a request of a CPA deal, how do you measure uh, or how do you accept those deals? How do you measure later on the lifetime of the players? Since like in many affiliate systems, we know that it's impossible to see the average lifetime of a player, uh, whether it's like, you know, longer than one or two weeks period, or, or what tools do you use in general to filter out the deals, whether, <laughs> not you Tristan, we, we won't make you reveal anything. <laughs> I mean, what do you use and how, how do you make sure that the CPA deal was lucrative for you? That it makes sense to keep paying them the CPA or it was just you know, one time thing and uh, they had some registrations, they got their fixed fees and uh, you didn't really get the value as, as, as a brand. So maybe you can start with Oksana. Yes, sure. Uh, to answer your question, uh, let's ask ourselves, what does operator want and what does affiliate want? Operator wants good quality traffic, not just bonus hunters, but the players who will stick to the brand, keep on playing, retention comes to place. What does affiliate want? Affiliate want to send traffic to the operator uh, from, uh, to a good partner who can convert that tra traffic, who can take care of the uh, sales funnel, the uh, steps which he's responsible for. And affiliate wants good affiliate to keep on earning money from the traffic he sent to the operator. So I have experience working from both operators and affiliate sites. And um, as former affiliate, I understand why affiliate wants CPA deals and listing fees. But to me now, working as an operator, it's a quick win. You know, if affiliate is asking for a high fixed fee and high CPA on top, we need to educate him. We need to educate him to tell him, do you want a quick win? or you want a long-term partnership. Uh, that's why as an operator, we like ref share deals and also hybrid deals with smaller CPA. Because if we have good retention, if we can convert that traffic, affiliate our partner on another site will keep on earning from that traffic from a number of years. That's why I find it's very important to explain to your business partner, and in some cases, even to educate them. What is better for you, to get 15K now or to earn five years every month, 15K. That's it. But what if uh, uh -huh. you are paying the CPA and uh, how do you find out that you really made money on that deal? What tools do you use? I mean, uh, with affiliate system only, it's impossible to uh -huh. see that, right? You have other costs behind, uh, some bonuses and etc. How do you, you know, filter out whether the deal was good? Yes, uh, how we measure the profitability of the deal. Uh, we take into account our expenses as an operator because we need to pay also the partners, game providers, license, etc., etc. Um, and uh, also, in our particular case, the company I work, we have uh, life to la sorry, speaking, <laughs> uh, speaking lifetime uh, value. We have it 
Yes, okay. so we can see it. Yeah, I will tell you later which software we use. Cool. <laughs> Wonderful. And Tristan reveals some tools for us, <laughs> finally. Uh, okay, so for us, it's, I mean, we have to make money, right? We're in, we're in the business of making profit. But we're also in the business of partnerships. That's what affiliation is, right? So it needs to be, it always needs to be an, an equal relationship. However, if it's new and it's a new deal, like with a listing fee, that's fine, you know, within conditions. Um, but it needs to make sense for us, uh, especially if we're doing a new deal and it's going to be a test. So we, we, we're happy, we'd be happy to test, but it needs to be... Um, it needs to make sense. It needs to make sense for both sides. So if, it, if it's just some crazy deal, we, we, would, we wouldn't entertain it. But we will see that, we'll look at a site, for instance, if it's SEO, and we'll, we'll validate that they've got enough traffic for us. If they have enough traffic for the right market, we're interested. So then we can quantify the fixed fee with a CPA. We'll add the two together and we'll get a single CPA value. If you know the value of your players, all right, in that market as an average, you can work that back to, to that amount. Um, and then you know, all right, for this, for this deal, at this rate, we need probably three months, six months to break even. So it's all about the risk reward and how long you're gonna look at that. I mean, affiliation, you're not gonna break even after a month. Sometimes not even three months. Sometimes it can take six months, 18 months. It just depends on your risk, risk uh, um, uh, allowance on your side, where you're going to make money. Um, and then, of course, yeah, on, on our side, we have to um, negotiate with our finance team to make sure that they're on board for us to go a little bit longer, of course, because everyone wants their money now. Um, but we're willing to take a little bit of a longer risk with new, with new um, say, deals. Um, but we will assess it properly. We have historical data that we would use internally. Uh, from all our tools. Uh, so we have a very good idea of our player values for the market, how the market works. Um, so, yeah, when I, when, I, when I get a deal and someone says, yeah, he has the deal, I'll tell them no. So I say no a lot because I know the value of a player and there's no way you, you're going you, you're gonna to tell me any different. But if there's value in the deal for both of us, we will make it worth your time and we'll work together long term to, to, to make you money and increase the deal even to give you reward. Um, but yeah, there, there's, there's, there's ways to do it um, properly, but it's about doing the right calculations and working back on your expenses and seeing what is a value deal for me and where can I make money. Because the most important thing is to make a return of investment. If I'm going to invest in a fixed fee, I need to get that fixed fee back. As long as I make the fixed fee back, even if it's on one player, I've got the ROI, right? So I'll reinvest in you. That's, that's the very, very simple basics of it. Give my money back and I'll give you more. Yeah, as you mentioned, your historical data probably is like a massive one and uh, you have plenty of things to look at and compare the results geo-wise and etc., which is, of course, great for such brands. And Giannis, how do you deal with uh, such cases? I was... Uh I was about to tell you about that. I mean, when we have historical uh, stats from a specific country that we are, you know, operating for some uh, at least six months, it's easier for us to know what is the actual value of the player, and it's easier for us to, you know, to go for a higher deal, for a flat fee deal or a higher CPA. The the bigger risk is when we actually open a new market that we don't have a big experience. So. The experience we are getting is from the affiliates. So they're coming, they're requesting for some uh, deals, from some CPA deals. So the only way in order to, you know, be more secure is to, to try and set them with some, let's say, test caps. Uh, but as long as we have some lifetime value, we have a BI team at the moment. I mean, I have the, you know, the, I have started in Cambion when it was really early, so we were doing everything. We were rushing to get the investment back uh, when an affiliate was not, uh, let's say, converting good in the first month. Perhaps we will go back and, you know, complain. But now we are more mature. We know that, especially some specific uh, markets, you need to be more, uh, you know, patient and wait. And maybe you need to invest something bigger, and also you need to to wait some more months in order to take your investment back. 
but in the end of the day, now we have a BI team. They're looking, you know, the, the lifetime value of the player you know, internally. So even if we cannot get it from the platforms, we have a team now that can help us. And in the end of the day, if I get, as uh, Tristan said, the, my investment from just one player, I'm good with that. I mean, when I, when I book a new deal, I say, I don't have any specific KPIs, let's say. If, if you bring me the deposits and it's like similar with your commission, <coughs> let's say the first few months, we're good. Even if you get it from one player. Cool, so the tool that uh, Tristan was not uncovering was the BI, right? <laughs> Excellent. So we are uh, close to finishing our, our uh, panel, but the last question goes to affiliates and is the following. Uh, what happens, I mean, uh, of course, since um, you have been in the industry for a while, and uh, especially with big affiliates, um, some companies pay fixed fees for specific locations, right, on specific pages. They want to be there for a month or two. What happens when these new operators entering the market doesn't perform, they don't perform well enough, their conversion is not you know, anywhere near uh, your average conversions, but you still have to keep them in those locations or, or you don't. What's the deal then? How do you deal with such operators and, and these kind of cases? Maybe we can start this time with Bain. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, uh, I, I can speak from my, my own experience. Uh, we always honor the deal. But um, I, the, the approach is a bit different. If you have somebody, somebody who you, you didn't deal with before, of course you're not going to shoot yourself in the foot and you know, oversell the positions. Um, the first, a lot of new brands, or, or I would say maybe all of them, uh, they're not eligible to get right on, on the top. Right, so they have to earn this, um, and and if you even if you do sell some some ex extra uh, uh, exposure, whatever, um, you, you know you test the water with like a, a month of two of exposure uh, to see how it goes. Otherwise, I mean, uh, if it, if it doesn't work, then then you're gonna be nowhere. Um, and um, if it happens that it doesn't work, um, then you try pretty much everything in your power, you know, to see you know to fix what's broken, to see where the issue is. It it can be some sometimes some something super simple. It can be something more serious, you know, that the, there are PSPs. That are missing for the specific market, that the landing page maybe is not is not good. So you know you, you do pretty much whatever you can to to seize this this impact on 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 your revenue. But there is only, only also like this is a two way street. What happens and maybe it's a it's a question for the operators as well. What happens when they buy something and then if this position doesn't perform? If they kind of That's over overpay point. something, because I mean it can happen. We're all witnesses of, of quite frequent Google updates, and it can wipe off your traffic within a day. And then what, what do you do then? Um, again, like uh, from from my perspective, we used to always compensate the exposure because at the end of the day, it's it's all about the partnership on uh, in the long term. So you try to give as much as you can and, and to kind of cover for it. But um, yeah, that's an excellent answer. But uh, I'm sorry that I mean we can't we can't have you know, operators sharing their, uh, their point this time. Do you have anything else to add, guys, to what uh, Branislav said from the affiliate perspective? Always. Yes? <laughs> we keep in mind these scenarios. When we have a deal, for sure we expect the good performance and the bad performance. So we keep some floating exposure spots where we can add this bad performing brand, for example, just to boost it with clicks maybe another type of traffic, slightly another type, I mean, from other page with other keywords, maybe this will work. And uh, since we are working with ECO traffic, we are not able to affect it uh, just instantly. We need time to get it affected, but we have the review. So we will change the review, we will change logotype, we will change bonuses, text, w whatever can affect the user, user's experience. Nobody knows which pe what people like, one of them like red color, another like huge font, and th etc. So we, s we try to play with these things and see what's happening, and sometimes it, it brings unexpected results. Yeah, changing reviews is very smart. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Paul? Yeah, there's uh, of course many reasons, that, um, many things that can perform or not perform. Obviously, we have a lot of data that what, what works. So we have to look into the sales funnel, and if, let's say if there's a new brand coming to Finnish market, let's say, and it's a pay and play, all of a sudden we see registrations a lot, but not FTDs. Then we know that, okay, there's, it, it's a hint that there's something problem with the, 
bank transfer or something like that. So uh, we try to give as much feedback as we can that, hey, guys, you should probably change this and that, uh, this work in uh, other brands, the similar position and stuff like that. So it's all about like we try to also help operators that they convert because if operator makes money, we make money. That's the basic law of the Makes industry. absolute sense. Tristan, you wanted to add something from the operator's perspective? Yeah, it's just, don't put all your eggs in one basket, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> otherwise... Uh, what that be, man? Uh, yeah, otherwise it <laughs> won't go well, but, but yeah. Cool. Okay. I think uh, we are pretty much done. Thank you very much, dear attendees and uh, our guests. So I hope you enjoyed and got some insights from, from our panel discussion today. Thank you very much. <laughs>